How are you? I'm swell. How are you? I'm great. Great. Good. Welcome awesome. Welcome back to another episode of Wicked. Mysterious. I'm your host, Danny, And I'm Katie. And this is season two, episode six. Wow. Holy cow. How, holy cow. How did it get here? I don't know. I don't know either. We're doing it, girl. We're doing it. Yep. We're doing it, but we about take a little break pretty soon, so. Yeah, we are. Yeah, but we'll be back. We'll be back. We're going to take a nice holiday break, yeah, but it's it. not really a break for us because we're still researching and recording <sighs> yes. and yes. it just buys us a little extra time. Mm-hmm. No breaks over here. <laughs> no days off. Yeah. So I'm excited. I've been waiting all year to do this episode for all, the good boys and girls out there. All year? All year. And it, so it has to be Christmas related then. It sure is. Oh, cool. And I know Joe Rogan has covered this. I know. Okay. I'm so sick of people being like, Joe Rogan, like as well, if we can't ever talk about the same things as I him. I know. And he covers everything. So, And I do like Joe Rogan and I specifically don't watch it so that I don't get his yeah. like ideas yep. Yep. so and a lot don't of forget people we covered the new bedford mermaid case before joe rogan that's did. very true that's people right. should tell him Sauce hey wicked 90. mysterious did that that's you can't right cover that <laughs> <laughs> people need to let him know mm-hmm. we had your back sauce 90 first but no wicked awesome for um joe rogan to cover that so cool yeah that is really cool yeah and All it's right. worth it that's for sure w- wicked good if you haven't listened to our mermaid um our siren episode do it, because yep. Joe Rogan covered it, so it's that good. It was one of our first episodes, too. Yes, it was. So, first, for this episode, a couple things. This does talk about illegal drugs, so okay. if that is not your thing, obviously our podcast is not for kids anyway, but yeah, maybe, maybe skip this one for your kids. <laughs> not for that they kids should sake. be listening. Um, also... I just want to say up front that I don't want to offend anybody with this. I just want to talk about an interesting and maybe even plausible explanation for some things that have never made sense to me Mm -hmm. and probably a lot of other people, I guess. Um, And I realize that religion is a very sensitive topic, so I'll do my best to be open-minded. Yep. I've been trying to, like, stay away from I statements during the writing of my episodes because none of this is about me. (laughs) But, like, in re-listening to our past episodes, which I do a lot, I've noticed that when it comes to religion and Christianity in particular, some of my opinions have, like, kind of slipped through. Mm -hmm. And my tone is kind of rude and judgmental. Mm -hmm. But I highly doubt that, like, the bulk of our listeners really care about that. I highly doubt, too. And if we lost them, we lost them. Well, I I know, but... (laughs) Like, my beliefs haven't changed, but the way that I want to be in the world has. So, there's that. If you're sensitive to the thought of your worldview being shaken up, then maybe this don't is not, listen. Yeah, yeah, this isn't the episode for you. It should come as no surprise that many Christmas traditions are mishmash, <laughs> mishmash of other religions, cultures, and events. Despite many people arguing that Christians stole pagan traditions, I watched quite a few videos that said there are no facts to support this theory, and a number of others arguing the opposite. But one theory is so very interesting, it made it into Wicked Mysterious fun to think about Imagine If land. Yay! Yay! My favorite place, my favorite land. To be. (laughs) We live in it. Yeah. In the last few years, there has been renewed interest in the healing effects of psilocybin, adaptogens, and hallucinogens. Yeah. From Super Mario to its mysterious links to Christmas, one mushroom is prominent and prevailing in pop culture. So let's get into it. In order to understand the potential links between Christmas and magic mushrooms, we have to go way back, 100,000 years ago. I can't believe this is real life right now. Why? <laughs> just your sentence. To the link between Christmas and magic mushrooms. I love it. I'm I just, know. I'm ready for it. I I'm know. here. It's so cool. It's it so cool. Okay, good. so we have to go way, way, way back, 100,000 years ago, when humans transitioned from Homo erectus to Homo sapiens. <laughs> Terence McKenna who was an American mystic and ethnobotanist, came up with the stoned ape theory in his 1992 book, Food of the Gods. 
His theory was that the cognitive leaps our species made were due to the ingestion of psilocybin, particularly from the mushroom psilocybe cubensis, also known as golden halo or most commonly shrimps. Shrimps. Though his theories have mostly been ripped apart by scientists, it's still really cool to think about. McKenna alleges that psilocybin was responsible for increases in energy, attention, libido, genetic diversity, language, music, and even spirituality. Some people believe that it wasn't mushrooms that did this, but DMT from ayahuasca. Terence McKenna was known for his activism and the responsible and safe usage of psychedelics and was particularly well known for voicing his experiences with DMT. So put a pin in that because we're going to come back to that later. Okay. DMT. Mushrooms are classified as a fungi and are actually more closely related to humans than they are to plants. New evidence suggests that mushrooms are actually conscious and that they express individualistic behavior and can even hold short-term memories. But that's a whole other rabbit hole. That's so cool. In an article called The Relationship Between Psychedelics and Consciousness, Neuroscience.com describes studies done by Johns Hopkins University. Quote, the findings published March 28, 2022, in Frontiers in Psychology reveal that higher ratings of mystical type experiences, which often include a sense that everything is alive, were associated with greater increases in the attribution of consciousness. This study demonstrates that when beliefs change following a psychedelic experience, attributions of consciousness to various entities tend to increase, says Sandeep Nayak, MD, postdoctoral research fellow at the Johns Hopkins Center for Psychedelic and Consciousness Research, and one of the researchers involved in the study. For this study, the researchers analyzed data gathered between August 2020 and January 2021 on 1,606 people who had a belief-changing psychedelic experience. Participants averaged 35 years of age and were predominantly white, 89%, male, 67%, and from the United States, 69%, end quote. The article goes on to say that the study was taken by participants who had a psychedelic experience in the last eight years prior, leading researchers to believe that these changes in belief were long-lasting and that people had profound changes in consciousness and perception. In particular, these participants had increases in belief that plants, animals, insects, and even inanimate objects all had consciousness. Cool. Isn't that crazy to think about? Yeah, that it almost like was an awakening for them. Yeah. Into like knowledge that they wouldn't have had prior. Like nobody was teaching them this beforehand. Right. They just came out of the experience like knowing it. Yes. And that's all different psychedelics. That's, that's LSD, DMT, oh, cool. mushrooms, it, any any psychedelic. Cool. So without getting too far into the weeds of religion itself... Um, it's important to explain a key distinction between Jesus as a person and Jesus as a concept or a consciousness. Mm -hmm. Some theologists believe that, that what's called Christ consciousness is this gift that was given to humanity, whether by psilocybin, aliens, evolution, or some kind of DNA changing ray gun, which hmm. by the way, did you know there's a patent for that? A DNA changing ray gun? Yes. I wouldn't be surprised. Um <laughs> slightly off topic but that's crazy i have a i have a book um somebody bought me called the synchronicity key um and i've been reading that and he says in that book about this dna changing ray gun and that there's actual we'll have to do an episode on it probably yeah but it there's a real patent for it and it's been used scientifically um and that they were able to shoot like dna rays at frog eggs yep and salamanders hatched wow and that there was no Wait. evolution at all it's instant wow and because that there's it's evidence. normally a little minnow right isn't it called a minnow first with the frog and then it turns into the a tadpole a tadpole that's it these were before even tadpole this right was so eggs. it so it was egg and then it went right into a salamander instead of like the evolution of the tadpole to the frog is what you mean because it was frog no, eggs they, they they shot 
salamander DNA at a frog egg and a ha- and a salamander hatch. Right. Okay. There was no more frog at all. Yeah. And there was no so in evolution that's how DNA supposedly the theory is that DNA has changed by evolution years and years and years of, yeah. of that. But, but they're saying that it can be done without that. Wow. So it starts to make you think like, is that why there's no missing link? Because somebody came down here and shot apes with human DNA. <laughs> it's that's crazy to think about, right? With ray guns, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like fucking um what was that place called? Laser gate. Yeah. <laughs> Laser gate for DNA. <laughs> So, anyway, Christ consciousness, put simply, is the awareness of self as part of a universal system. Mm. And that's why some theologists believe that the Bible and the idea of Jesus as a person is simply a story of the human embodiment of that consciousness. Mm. So, fun fact, there's zero evidence that Jesus was born on Christmas at all. (laughs) Mm -hmm. In fact, historians believe that if Jesus was an actual living, breathing person, he was not born in December at all. Wow. What does occur in December, though, is the winter solstice, Mm. my actual favorite holiday. Mm -hmm. The winter solstice is the longest night of the year and represents final darkness before light, which metaphorically could represent the dawn of Christ consciousness or consciousness to humanity, Mm -hmm. a.k.a. the birth of Jesus. Or consciousness. Yeah. Or evolution of consciousness, maybe. Mm-hmm. If you don't already know, the day following the winter solstice is when the days start to get longer and longer again. Yep. Which I was telling my dad about writing this episode, and he was like, oh, is that why they say the sun is coming back? Like, Jesus coming back? Because it's the actual sun that's coming right. yeah. back. Because that's what pagans celebrate, mm-hmm. um, is... The whole festival of lights is not about Jesus as a person or about like a religious holiday. It's about the actual sun coming back. Yeah. Yep. So that's why winter solstice is celebrated to welcome back the sun, the giver of light. Mm -hmm. There's actually a whole history channel documentary available on YouTube that goes into the entire history of Christmas as a holiday. Um, And it's worth a watch if that's at all appealing to any history buffs out there. I thought it was kind of dry, but I did learn some interesting information. Like there wasn't, there's always been St. Nicholas, but Santa, like commercialism was actually invented by Coca-Cola. Yeah. I I heard something. I thought it was like a, I thought it was like a candy company, but yeah, St. Yeah. Wow. Because St. Nicholas has been a patron saint of children and the, and generosity and stuff like that has been a thing, but the actual right. like, like Santa, Santa coming Santa. to your house and and we'll get into more about that but the yeah. commercialism behind Santa was Coca-Cola. Wow. That's It's crazy. so crazy cuz that's not that long ago. It's really that's not. like less than 100 years ago and we yeah. we've forgotten as a society that that wasn't like a thing. Yeah. So hmm. again aside from St. Nicholas the patron patron saint of children the idea of a man bringing gifts and a sleigh through the snow is supposedly traced back to siberia so siberia is known as the heartland of shamanism Mm. and likely had some sort of tradition or celebration for the winter solstice okay so here's where we get into the really cool stuff so I thought this was really cool already. Thanks. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I hope somebody does because I, I really enjoyed writing this episode. But Good. Amanita muscaria, also known as fly, agar- fly agaric, is the most recognizable mushroom with its vibrant red cap and white spots. Oh, my God. This mushroom has been used by shamans for centuries, including those Siberian tribes in ceremonial contexts. Wow. Amanita muscaria has medicinal properties such as relief from pain, fatigue, depression, anxiety, uh, low appetite, insomnia, and fever. It even reduces fear and was said to have been used by warriors before battle. Wow. Users often report a feeling of euphoria and the feeling of one consciousness and a connection to the universe. So cool. And I don't know if I'm saying that right. Amanita muscaria. I think I am. So I'm sorry. But. It sounds like you're saying, I'm need my mascara. <laughs> so I'm not insin- insinuating that anyone should just go out and eat this. They are extremely toxic. 
So please be safe if you're interested in this. Though they are well known for their healing properties for centuries, it can be very, very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. They're toxic if not prepared in very specific ways. Um, A lot of mushrooms are like that too, right? What's that? A lot of mushrooms are like that too, right? Like they're they're toxic and they're not okay to just prepare any certain way. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, oh, it's like you really got to know what you you're can, doing. But you can, like, these these you can eat and not die. You just have to be, like, wicked careful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You can eat and not die. I read one. Well, some will kill you, like, immediately. Right. But I did read one trip report that was titled something like, Emanita Muscaria Fun Until I Died. Oh. And this guy way overdosed. Oh, shit. And his heart rate went down to one beat per minute. And he had to have his stomach pumped in, like, the whole nine. Holy shit. Yeah. So... Be careful yeah. if this is your cup of tea. If this is your cup of mushroom tea. Um, so this mushroom, though, the red and white one, yeah. is often seen in fairy tales through history mm-hmm. and is associated with fairies and gnomes. Okay. In folklore, it's touted as the gateway to other realms, a wish granter, and the mushroom of immortality. Wow. In pop culture, we know it from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, yep. where Alice eats different part of different parts of the mushroom to become bigger or smaller in size. Yeah. It's often illustrated in Alice in Wonderland as the Amanita muscaria, but the book does not specifically say what species of mushroom he's talking about. Okay. But it is widely believed to be the same one. Okay. Probably the most famous example of this mysterious fungus in pop culture is in Mario. Oh, yeah. The red and white gliding mushroom changes Mario's size Mm -hmm. from small to big, much like in Alice in Wonderland. That's because Amanita muscaria is not like other hallucinogens. Tripsitter.com says it's an oneirogen, which enhances dreamlike states of consciousness. Unlike other psychedelic substances, oneirogens produce more lucid hallucinations kind of like you're dreaming while you're awake some of these commonly experienced distortions are not being able to determine the size of things around you or the size of thing of yourself in comparison to the things around you yeah hence the effects on alice right and mario mm-hmm. isn't that so cool yeah it is super cool and i can definitely attest from um personal usage that the first thing I ever feel with magical mushrooms is like the awareness of the size difference. Like when oh, I stand up. Oh, this is supposed to be just the Amanita muscaria, just the red and white ones. Oh, I yeah. Because magic mushrooms are not oneirogens. Oh. Well, I can attest Still that happens. magical mushrooms, when, like the first thing I, I feel is um the spatial awareness yeah. difference. Like yeah. if you stand up, you think you're like 15 feet tall. Yeah. Or if you are going down the stairs, the stair like the depth right. looks so deep. Yeah. Know? But sorry, yeah, you were talking about a different mushroom. No, I I mean it's possible that but I'm sure because one, hallucinogens do that anyway, but yeah, this like But this one is definitely for yeah, known for this. I think it's like maybe the spatial awareness is just hallucinogens in, in general. general yeah. Um but yeah. this one in particular, you're not you do hallucinate, but it's not like that. It's like you're, I don't even know how else to describe it. You're like awake. Yeah. But it sounds it's like you're dreaming. Intriguing. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. So, um, can we order these somewhere? <laughs> you can. You just have to be really careful. Yeah, and that's true. you have to, there was a lady, um, I think she was Russian. They interviewed her on a YouTube video that I watched. Um, and she had to wear a wig and like disguise herself because. Um, she was like a regular MD and she was like wicked against, like, didn't think that, that this was a good idea at all and started researching it and like realized Uh how much it helps and stuff. And Uh they like, they try to like ban her and like for even talking about it. Wow. Yeah. So she had to disguise herself to to buy them? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, no, to talk about it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow. So, yeah. Known as the Mushroom of Enchantment. Amanita muscaria is often depicted on Christmas cards as a symbol of good luck. It also has a symbiotic relationship with evergreen trees oh, and Christmas trees. Cute. They grow at their roots and then they're gathered in late autumn just before snowfall. I didn't know that. I know. That's so cute. Reindeer also eat these mushrooms. Oh, that's And healthy. it was noticed 
that their behavior was altered. Sometimes appearing, sometimes the reindeer appear to be jumping around, also known as prancing or dancing <laughs> uh-huh. or dashing. Yep. Like dancer, prancer, and dasher. Yeah. The reindeer. Yeah. It's believed that the shaman would bring Amanita muscaria as gifts to Siberian families who were snowed into their homes during the winter solstice. And because they were snowed in, the shaman would have to enter through the smoke hole of the roof of the yurt, which in modern day terminology would be the chimney. Yeah. Right? Wow. Um, It's been proposed though there's no real evidence that the stockings hanging by the fireplace were used to dry the mushrooms or that they adorned the evergreen trees that were brought into the yurt. Mm -hmm. So they would put the mushrooms on the trees to dry them out before they ate them. Though many will argue that the Christmas tree is a pagan Yule or winter solstice tradition. Others argue that they did this in Siberia. And I read somewhere that evergreen trees were brought into the house to remind us that through throughout the darkest winters, we will always see green again. Hmm. And that green is ever present in these trees. And I just really like that idea. Yeah. Um, some even attribute Santa's red and white attire as an homage to the Amanita muscaria, claiming that Siberian shamans wore red and white during their ceremonies. Oh. So circling back to Terence McKenna, another interesting link, link between fairy tales Christmas and hallucinogens is the idea of elves. Uh huh. So as I mentioned previously, Amanita muscaria is often depicted with fairies and gnomes, but DMT also has similar entities associated with it, known as machine elves. Whoa. Have you ever heard of this? No. Okay, so I know people that have tried DMT. Yeah. And they do have... And I there's a guy that I follow on YouTube who who talks about machine elves and they're so Terrence McKenna was one of the first to coin the term machine elves and I don't want to get like super deep into it because I'd love to cover that separately because it's just cool. Um but they're supposed to be benevolent creatures that uphold the f- fabric of reality. What? And they're also known as clockwork elves or fractal elves. And these little, they're like little beings and they're childlike, yet possess wisdom beyond our human capacity. Wow. And they're often described as prankish. Huh. And like they have a sense of humor. Yep. They have some sort of agenda is like the common report of people that encounter these. They're up to something, mm-hmm. but we don't know what it is. Like they're building something and we can't grasp like what what it is they're doing. And they're curious about us, but they're excited to see us. Huh. And yeah, like I said, I'll leave that there because I'd like to do an episode on it. But you have to wonder if that has something to do with Santa and the elves building things. Yeah. And if it's all about either an expansion of consciousness or the dawn of consciousness, like how it can kind of all tie together with Christmas and the sun coming back and all that stuff. I just thought it was so cool. Yeah, for sure. The The machine elves made me laugh because you're like, have you ever heard of machine elves? And I'm like, I've heard of worker elves. Like, I don't, Yeah, I don't know so they any- are kind of like worker elves. Yeah. Like they're, they're small, yeah. just like Santa's elves. Yeah. They're doing something yeah. for, for us. Right. Or for reality. They're building something. Yeah. They're, they've been described as like, like gears in the machine of reality. Like they're, they're doing something. They have a, a place and they're building something or they have some sort of agenda. Yeah. I want to talk more. I want to do more research on them in particular, mm-hmm. but I just thought it was like an interesting link between that and Christmas. Yeah, lots of interesting links. Though there are many theories about the origin of Christmas traditions and of course consciousness itself, it would be incredible if the actual original Santa was a shaman bringing <laughs> the gift of enlightenment on the darkest day yeah that would mean the true meaning is generosity a celebration of the giver of light and the birth or expansion of human consciousness yeah that's that's a really nice way to believe 
which makes me just love because I, I like the solstice anyway. I just think the idea is so cool because so many people are affected by like the dark. seasonal affective yeah depression and all yep. that stuff and it's good to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel like yeah. once we get through this hump of december 21st oh, yeah. every day after that it, we're coming back to the light and it's Thank it's goodness. always going to be cyclical like we're always going to have to deal mm -hmm. with that every winter but yeah it's nice to know that yeah like there might be other reasons for the celebration and yeah generosity and yeah. lights and stuff like that that isn't like church oriented or religion oriented yeah i agree i like it a lot that way so that's it i hope you enjoyed that episode i hope i uh yeah brought something different than joe rogan i wouldn't know because i don't listen to <laughs> i don't want to steal his stuff and it's hard to yeah it's hard to not take other people's words after you listen to them, it's you know? It's very difficult, yes. I hate when I have a topic and then I see, actually, the topic I've been talking to you about for mm -hmm. the past, like, five weeks that mm -hmm. I have, um, I just saw it, like, all over Facebook. And I was no like, way. I swear if Danny sees this, because I gave you a little hint. And I didn't and, know what it was. And you didn't. And I'm like, it's, like, all over the place right now. So I'm like, it's, like, big right now. And it drives me crazy. I want to do it before it's covered by, like one of the people that we like you know yeah yeah the influences that we watch and stuff um be and other podcasters because yeah i hate it i hate when they recently do something i don't want to do it right i don't want them to think i'm you know stealing that happened their idea with mile higher i know and there's just so many damn ideas out right. there it's like we're bound to run into the it's same topic happen. around the same time yeah but we usually we tend to do topics that are not so current which we have covered current topics that are important yeah. and interesting but i think like what we do we dig dig deeper is better you know yeah. but yeah i really really liked this whole episode good job with it thank you um i like how you tied everything together Thanks. And I, I, again, I've said it like a billion times, but I don't think I'm right. <laughs> like, I just think it's cool to think about. And yeah. I, I like to be able to tie things together and be like, oh, that fits there and that makes sense. But part of like, part of this whole thing is just acknowledging that we will never know. That's true. We will, until we die, yeah. we'll never ever know. Yeah. Like, I can think and something and believe something till I'm blue in the face, but it doesn't make it real. And that's the fun of it because... We can be fascinated and we can have that curiosity and we'll never have the answers and it's fun to have our own imagination. So Yeah. yeah. Don't stomp on our imagination. Yeah, I wish I know. I'm we gonna keep know. saying it, but I wish I could remember what art that we I know. had such a good tagline. It was, good. It was, it was good. so good. But I've got listener mail for us. I was gonna send you a screenshot of this, but I decided to yeah, keep to it. save it. Yeah. Good. All right. So we've got an email. It says, Hey Katie and Danny. All this week, December 4th through 7th, I have been binge listening at work. I love you two girls. Your beloved banter brings me back to best friend memories. Gosh Aww. darn fun. See, people like our banter. Yeah. <laughs> says, so your two's friendship is so collaborative with kind questions and grounded responses. Give me a sense of belonging in this cosmic collective. Oh, I love that. I'm trying not to cry. She's one of Don't us. Cry. <laughs> you just gave a shout out to Kristen while I'm writing this. Wow. To you. And my name is also Kristen. That's weird. And I just listened to the synchronicity episode. <gasps> I was just going to say, was she listening to the synchronicity episode? Whoa, I'm on the right track. Yes. Wow, cool. So I win the Wicked Fan of Wicked Mysterious podcast. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for finally agreeing to do this podcast. I'm from Washington, the home of the Bigfoot, so there's that. Cool. You two also have an adorable relationship with your fans. You're very open-minded, fucking hilarious. <laughs> I love that. Fucking difficult word to spell. And <laughs> respectful. Thank you for honoring and respecting the original narrator's stories. Yeah. If you ever have an audience member to interview or invite for a fun chitty-chatty chit-chat, <laughs> then choose me, I'm just saying. Cool. Happy Melted Cheese Holidays. Sincerely, Kristen H. K-Star, Kristenopolis. Wow, that was so good. Isn't that a beautiful? That, it, I have chills, Kristen. I do too. Thank that you, Kristen. That was beautiful. Yes, thank you. We love you. And yeah. keep listening and, and tell your cool friends. I love to tell people to tell their cool friends because, you know, let's face it, only cool people 
are listening. I know. So. And I, it makes me so happy that she says it gives her a sense of belonging yeah. because I'm sure you can relate to that. Thinking yeah. deeply is not True. a it's friend maker. Correct. And it can be very, very, very lonely. So I'm yep. glad that you have found some solace in us. <laughs> yeah, we welcome you all with open arms. Yes. Open minds as well. Open minds and open arms. <laughs> Love it. So that's it. So um Yeah, it's the holiday season, so hopefully you're getting your shopping done. Yes. And you're getting ready to spend quality time with your fams. Yep. And, and uh, welcoming back the sun. <laughs> yes. Yes. So happy winter solstice to everybody. And we will see you next, next week. week. Yeah. Next week. And there's a little mini. And then we're going to take our little hiatus. Two week break. Yep. Mm -hmm. For Christmas and New Year. Very but short we'll be one. Back. It's we promise. Very fast, people. If Katie feels better. Yeah. It's been, it's been a struggle. But we're here now, so that's what matters. Yes. And we will be back. Healing vibes. Yeah, we will for be back. For the ghost pepper that is Send now it. lodged in her bowels. <laughs> <laughs> they did not need to know about the ghost pepper. I'm oh, sorry. Send her some healing what vibes for the ghost pepper that is lodged is in, lodged my in lower. her <laughs> lower abdomen. <laughs> it's the lower intestine. Oh, it's so. I really do need all the healing vibes, so send them my way, please. Thanks. All right. That was fun. That was a great episode. Good okay, job. Okay, good. I'm glad. I really yeah. enjoyed that. Awesome. It really put me in the holiday fucking spirit. Right? I'll tell you. It's all thinking about it in a different way. I know. I'm ready for it now. Yeah. I can't wait to go sa see Santa at the mall this weekend. <gasps> Yesterday? And give him the look. Yesterday I was driving and I saw Santa and Mrs. Claus I, driving in, in an old school car. They had the roof, the top down. That is down, so cool. That is and we so beeped cool. and they waved and I was like, oh my God, it's Santa. That is so cool. That beats mine. I thought you were going to say, you saw what I saw. I saw a Santa cowboy. <laughs> and as I saw the Santa cowboy, I sang to myself, it's a Santa cowboy, it's a Santa cowboy. As I drove by him, I swear to God, I thought you were just going to say to me, I saw a Santa cowboy. Was Mrs. Claus in there too? No, no. It okay. was just a, a single Santa cowboy walking on, um, well, I don't want to say the road, but a main road in Fairhaven. Oh, wow. So it was very random. If the Santa cowboy is listening, hi, you were fucking awesome. You made my day. But Santa I, always makes my day. I just, I wish Santa brought me magical mushrooms. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. You'd get really sick. You have to be really careful. <laughs> well, it... But that's like ayahuasca, not to get, I know we're trying to wrap up this episode, my, but. My bowel needs it right now. Yeah. I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. It could well, cure me from the pepper, maybe. The guy who ate, who like almost OD'd on them. Yeah. You, somebody, our listeners go read that trip report. He said that <laughs> he threw up so much and was looking at his puke and going, oh my God, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I was just going to say, dude, I've thrown up colors before. Like, yeah, that's what he said. He yeah. Said it was and like it sparkling. did look pretty. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's so funny. All right. On All that right. note. <laughs> All right. That's a great way to end the episode. Enjoy your magical puke miss. All right. Stay, Stay mysterious. mysterious.